guys, what's up? Aru, Merry Christmas. Chen Yu Vale isn't only the place where we'll know more about the Adepti like Cloud Retainer and the Mountain Shaper, but it also could be where the real Geo Sovereign might be located. And it won't be gold like our Deus Auri Zongli, instead, it might be Jade. So welcome to another video of someone who hates mountains but loves birds. Before we pack our bags and head over to Natlan, I want to talk about Chen Yu Vale first. So in this video, we'll go over its location and possible relation to Celestia, Mount Yao Jun, and the Herb Lord as well as her Adeptus friend, other areas within and surrounding Chen Yu Vale, the Jade Slab, and the possible Geo God that once ruled this land. Finally, a theory segment on why this is where the Geo Sovereign might be located. Timestamps below. Let's get started. Starting off, Chen Yu Vale is located in this gap between Fontaine and Liwe. It is also where Celestia seems to be floating directly over. This sub-area within Liwe is likely characterized by its own name. A vale or valley is a low area between two mountains. Typically, this lowland area would have a river or stream flowing through it, and is usually formed due to the erosion of land because of the water between it over a long period of time. This sort of topography for Chen Yu Vale can be backed up by its own lore, where by the river within Chen Yu Vale didn't have a ford to cross over on foot long ago, meaning the river on Chen Yu Vale used to be very wide and deep, hence the creation of harbors like Yilong Wharf or Kaoying Village and its trade with Fontaine and other regions. But today, this river is likely crossable by foot without sailing across it but is still passable to boats looking for trade. Chen Yu Vale also has humid weather, meaning that this region is hot and wet, similar to tropical rainforests or jungles in real life. So expect this this sub area to have a mix of Fontaine, Liwe, and Sumeru's characteristics all in one. Chen Yu Vale is also surrounded by other possible sub areas that we've heard of, such as the Baida Harbor of Sumeru, and maybe even Dorman Port from Mondstadt, and a possible port from Sneznaya in the future. And considering Chen Yu Vale is close to Fontaine's Lumidos Port, where international trade is known for, we can expect a mass of trade routes and ships from multiple regions in this sub area. Artisans trading prized Yilong Jade ornaments, tea gatherers and their nine scented tea, spices from Sumeru, wine from Mondstadt, ore and metallic accessories from Fontaine, and maybe even trade from Sneznaya. Something unique to Chen Yu Vale is its Yilong Jade and special tea made from tea trees scattered throughout the valley or at least in Kaoying village. These Yilong jades and tea trees are an essential part of Chen Yu Vale's culture and history. Possibly thousands of years before, within the mountains of Chen Yu Vale was a special slab of jade that was said to be able to bring something called sweet rains to the land. At this point, it's worth noting that Celestia is floating above Chen Yu Vale, so these sweet rains might be related to Celestia and the heavenly envoys' blessings, as well as the Sealy and the three moon sisters in Liwe's mythology. Not to mention that this was written in the book Moonlit Bamboo Forest, which we have in Liwe, as well as Qingxi Village being the area where this legend originated, which is closest to Chen Yu Vale and Celestia. But this jade slab could also be the true essence of Geo long ago, since this jade slab was already present before the Seven or even the Adepti ruled the land. And this slab could be a testament to the previous gods, possibly before the Sili era and the Primordial one. Back to Chen Yu Vale itself, there were also two Adepti that resided in the mountains. One of the Adeptus was the master of Mount Yao Jun, while the other was an Adeptus really fond of tea. Long ago, a promise or deal between these two Adepti was formed by planting a tree between the master's mountain and the deep river to a misty hillside. The river at the time was deep enough that no one could cross on foot, hence no ford. The two Adepti promised that this tree's leaves would then be used to make tea and would be shared with all the Adepti of the lands. Shan Yun or Cloud Retainer and the Mountain Shaper were sort of friends with these two Adepti, so Zhang Li would also be present and would be part of this tea banquet at the time. Somewhere between the Archon War and the Cataclysm, the master of Mount Yao Jun took the slab of jade and made it into small ornaments to keep demons from taking it. These demons are likely creatures from the abyss. After creating these small jade ornaments, the master hid them by tossing the 
ornaments into rivers, hiding it in hills, and even giving it to shrines and temples around Liwe. These jade ornaments from the slab would then become artifacts known as the Echoes of Offering. And of these artifacts, one of the jade ornaments shaped like a leaf was tied to the tree that the two adepti planted. After the turmoil and demons were gone, the master returned but in a different aspect. Its fingers were gone and could no longer untie the jade leaf from the tea tree, and she even lost her memories from the past, while the tea-loving Adeptus had sunk beneath the water. After unknown number of years, the tea tree and its branches were grafted onto other trees in the Vale by humans who were said to have lived in the mountains. These are likely the tribes of remaining humans from a past era that used to worship the fallen god of Chenyu Vale. Now, grafting is the act of adding a branch or stem of a plant to another plant or tree to create another tree without having to plant a seed, from my understanding. And grafting can also be done to produce dwarf trees. So we could expect grafting and bonsai tea trees to be part of later patches. Now the people who lived in Chenyu Vale were claimed to be either from the chasm after the events of the Archon War, or well, the chasm itself's events, or people on the misty hillside after the rivers receded and could be crossed on foot. Meaning that these people could be part of the era of Sili and the primordial one. After some time, tea trees would grow abundant within Chenyu New Vale, and the people currently ruled by Zhongli would still hold ceremonies with jade ornaments as sacrifices to the god that once resided there, as well as holding tea ceremonies for the promise that the two adepti made with the tea tree. Tangent. Something I need to mention for my sake is the identities of the herb lord, the tea-loving adeptus, and the god who once ruled Chen Yu Vale. As far as I could understand, the herb lord was the master of Mount Yao Jun, and the god that ruled Chen Yu Vale were two separate entities. The god of Chen Yu Vale that the people once worship and still do as a tradition is related to however the slab of jade in Chen Yu Vale ended up there, as well as the origins and its power to bring quote-unquote sweet rains. Even though the herb lord was the one who made the giant slab into smaller ornaments, we still don't know who actually made it or how it ended up there in the first place. As a tradition, the people of Chenyuville today travel to Yilong Wharf to honor their ancestors and the dead, but few or even none partake in the very old and ancient sacrificial ceremonies of tossing jade ornaments into the river for the once worshipped god and the long silent quote unquote messengers of the sky. The jade ornaments and its symbolisms which came from the big jade slab capable of sweet rains once bore the blessings of this deity's pack. This god could be the few progenitors or ancestors of the adepti, like Zhongli known as Morax before, or Marcosius, the stove god. Or if we get a little crazy, a god from a much older era, whose pack could refer to humanity's covenant with the primordial one long ago. A covenant made with humanity after the fall of the dragon sovereigns. And this lab could be a remnant of those sovereigns, particularly the Geo sovereign. Since Celestia is right above this sub-area of Liwe, and Zhang Li is the most powerful Archon as well as most powerful Adepti, then this jade could be from the most powerful sovereign dragon, don't you think? When Zhang Li did come to Chenyu Vale, he noticed that the people regressed into small tribes and were scattered among the hills and valleys, which could be pointing towards the people who dwelled in the mountain at the other side of the river. So it's possible that the ancestors of Chenyu Vale were from the Sili and the Heavenly Envoy era after the fall of the Dragon Sovereigns, and those quote-unquote messengers of the sky or envoys have long since left and the people have either become hilly churls or have been reduced to small tribes in terms of population, and all of them today have fused with Liwe's general culture and traditions. Which does make sense considering the Herb Lord and the Tea Adeptus would only be at Mount Yao Jun after Chen Yu Vale was placed in the care of Zhong Li, and would again leave and fall after the Archon War, of which they would return to this tea tree after that war. But that's just my perspective using my disheveled timeline. End of tangent. 
as of current patch 4.3, there are two towns slash villages in Chenyu Vale that we know of. Yilong Wharf or Yilong Port is located on the northwest side of Chenyu Vale facing Fontaine. Ceremonies where the people of Chenyu Vale travel to Yilong Wharf are done to commemorate their ancestors as well as to honor those who have passed away. Long ago, the people who worship an ancient god of Chenyu Vale would conduct festivals as well as their ancient tradition of tossing jades in commemoration of their new life after their god had perished. But this tradition of tossing jade has long since passed and few or possibly none have been doing this tradition. Rarer forms of jade are known as Yilong jade with its bluish green color that can be found in ruins, mountains, and valleys of Liwe, which is likely reflected upon the jade ornaments that the master of Mount Yaojun created to hide from demons and turmoil. Artisans in the Yilong port create these lesser jade ornaments like the artifacts you see from the echoes of an offering. These jade ornaments symbolize the tradition of jade carving in honor of Chenyu Vale's ancient god as well as bearing the once blessing of a deity and its pact. With whom, you ask? A pact between two deities? Adepti, perhaps. Or maybe a pact a deity made long ago with humans after the fall of dragons, and when messengers from the sky once dwelled in Tavat. Who knows? Next is Kiaoying Village, known for its high-quality aromatic tea and its annual tea-serving ceremonies. What's unique to Kiaoying Village are the tea trees surrounding the village as well as its intricate tea ceremony using withered flowers called spirit scent flowers, creating a nine-layered scented tea and then presenting it in the village's hall. The name itself, Spirit Scent, is both intriguing and ominous or disturbing since you could be taking in the wafts or the scent of spirits that have passed away through the flowers. The tea trees are a testament to the promise between the two adepti of Chenyu Vale to gather all the adepti at Mount Yaojun for a large tea banquet. Although the master of Yaojun lost all its fingers, memories, as well as turning into a different aspect or form, and the tea-loving adeptus had sunk into the water, the tea tree that they had planted grew and was taken in by humans, then becoming the tea trees that held the promise of the two adepti in their stead. And the tea that they make is still quite an experience. A certain old man makes the finest tea anyone would ever have, which we've heard from our adventurer friend Zi Xiong. Zi Xiong, I still don't know how to say her name, who we might see again after her travels in the chasm. Hu Tao also seems to want tea from Kiaoying village and is often sending Zhong Li to fetch it for him. Now, the only theory that I'm really focused on finding clues about is the possibility of the dragon sovereign of Geo and that the original Geo wasn't gold like Zhong Li or Deus Ori, god of gold, but it could possibly be jade. Not only is jade more valuable than gold, its measure of price will always differ even in weight and quality. Each piece of gold is the same price, while each piece of jade will vary depending on a variety of characteristics, ranging from transparency of the jade, weight, coloration, and even the texture of the jade. Not to mention different forms of jade such as jadeite and nephrite, while gold itself is simply measured by its purity or carat, meaning unit of precious stone. So so what if this big jade slab, similar to Fontaine's primordial sea, is actually Li Wei's primordial stone or primordial jade? Zhang Li was called Deus Ori by Nouvellette, roughly meaning god of gold, and Geo is currently characterized with its golden color, as well as Mora being controlled by Zhang Li. But maybe that's only because he is the god of gold and not the god of Geo. Now, what if the true sovereign of Geo was actually the purest and rarest form of jade? Think of a bluish green colored dragon with jade ores all over its body and could control jade in all its forms throughout Liwe. Considering that the primordial one would replace the dragon sovereign with a quote-unquote copy of what once was, similar to Fontaine and the primordial heart of the primordial sea, recreating the meaning of Geo using a different ore and a different god and then creating a different narrative using the seven and the archons as their base would mean that every element isn't exactly the element it originally was. Nouvellet as the Hydro Archon could also control Numa Osha after getting his full power back. So maybe Li Wei's version of that is through the Jade that is only found in Li Wei. The few mentions of Jade include the Nephrite Catalyst, Ningguang's Jade Screen which is yellow, the Jade Chamber which is where she lives, 
the Primordial Jade weapons, which in the name itself is the Primordial Jade, and lastly, Chen Yu Vale, where the Jade Slab of Sweet Rains come from. Mentions of the word Jadeite come from the Smaragdus Jadeite, which is treasured by the Adepti and is deadly to humans, as well as Jadeite names being used as soundtracks for the Jade Chamber, the Sea of Clouds, and as the Hus theme. So maybe Jade really is the true Geo element of Liwe. But that's gonna be for a different video and one that I'll have to look for more info on to make sense of first. And that's it, everything we know about Chen Yu Vale, plus a bit of theory from what we know so far. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment below, will 4.4 be like the Chasm and Inazuma, or will Cloud Retainer's quest be about Ganyu's childhood instead? In all seriousness, I think Cloud Retainer and Gaming, or Gaming's release, as well as the upcoming Lantern Rite and Chinese New Year are coming up. Chen Yu Vale is honestly the best region to release alongside Fontaine's recent hype. I do hope that we get more Netland content content though as we start to move along the patches in the near future. But anyways, that's it from me. Again, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!